I am not a Christian. I believe in God and spirits, but I don't believe in religion. In my opinion, religion takes a message of peace and love and twists it into something that it's not supposed to be. If two men love each other and want to spend the rest of their lives with one another, I wish them nothing but happiness. But the church would rather damn them to eternal hell for just being in love. A woman gets an abortion, I support her choice as it's her body, while the religious would rather shame her and call her a baby killer. It makes me feel as though the religious among us do not realize we're all human. We have flaws, and no one is pious or above falling into the abyss. Tim Lambesa soared high off of the success of the band As I Lay Dying, but he flew too close to the sun and fell to the earth and into a prison cell. Tim Lambesis was born on November 21st, 1980 in Scottsdale, Arizona, but he grew up in San Diego, California. His family were Christians and he went to a Christian school, the Santa Fe Christian School in Solana Beach, California. While some kids who come from a religious upbringing tend to mimic their parents' faith without much thought, Tim wasn't like that. He was genuine in his faith. He pretty much didn't follow his parents into their faith. He believed wholeheartedly. In fact, he was voted most like Jesus by his classmates which is going to be a little bit ironic considering what he does later on, but I digress. While a teen, he began to play music as well, playing in a few local bands started by other teens, including a band he helped form called A Life Once Lost, which sounds more emo than Christian, to be honest. I mean, you can try to spin that to a Christian message. It just seems more emo than Christian. Look, I get his bands were secular and all that, but he did state a lot of his inspirations came from things he was passionate about, which was mostly Christian ideology. For a while in 2000, he left a life once lost to work with a group called Society's Finest. But that didn't last long. According to Lambesis, he left because they weren't touring. So he went back to a life once lost. And then he found out the name was taken, which is when he and his bandmates changed the name of the band to As I Lay Dying. I am going to be completely transparent here. I tried listening to As I Lay Dying to prepare for this video, and I have to say, not my style of music. While I do like some metalcore bands like Architects and Killswitch Engage, I am not a huge fan of the genre as a whole. Every time I hear the vocals, I end up wondering why they're screaming at me. Not only that, but they're screaming mostly positive and inspirational lyrics in an angry and growly way. This is mixed messages. Am I supposed to feel happy or am I supposed to feel angry. Anyways, with that small tangent out of the way, let's talk about As I Lay Dying. Not really a Christian band, but mostly made up of Christians. On November 6, 2001, they released their first album entitled Beneath the Encasing of Ashes, which on a podcast I listened to while researching this, one of the songs was played and the podcaster talked about how the song moved him, which... All I got from the song was headaches, and confusion, and flashbacks of when my mom yelled at me for setting fire to the living room carpet. But they had their fans, and they grew from there. By the mid-2000s, the band was pretty successful, working with Metal Blade Records, touring with Big Axe, and they had a very passionate fan following, which allowed Tim to also start a side project in 2008, an Arnold Schwarzenegger-inspired band called Austrian Death Machine which according to Wikipedia is a parody and a tribute of Arnold Schwarzenegger films with such classics like Get to the Choppa. Tim really liked Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tattoos and Jesus, but behind the scenes, things were not as sunny and rosy for As I Lay Dying. The band was not as united as it seemed. According to Tim, all the members of the band questioned their faiths at one time or another, which I take with a grain of salt, but Tim himself began to shift into a completely different person. It started with bodybuilding, which is harmless, till he started using steroids. Tim married a woman named Megan Murphy in 2004. They had two children together, but the children were adopted. Tim had been inspired to adopt by an experience he had on a mission trip when he was younger. He wanted to show love to those he felt deep in his heart had no one, which is honestly touching. But slowly, Tim began to change. 
he got a lot more tattoos, where he would be accused of spending more on tattoos than his family. But according to him, he never once paid for a tattoo. And we know of one he didn't pay for, which he got while appearing on the show LA Inc., which is the image of a Jesus with a guitar. I don't know why, but I call that Nickelback vibes. The marriage was disintegrating though. He spent more and more time touring than at home. And when he was at home, he was spending more and more time in the gym than with his family. He went from looking overly skinny to jacked and in a time frame that was slightly unnatural because he was taking steroids as well. In 2012, Tim decided he no longer believed in Jesus, which normally is pretty harmless. People lose faith all the time. But in his case, it was a sign he was spiraling out of control. As I Lay Dying released Awakened that year, and he claimed on a Tumblr post that tradition and truth are always at odds with one another. That he no longer had a belief in God, but was still inspired by the words of Jesus. One month earlier though, he told his wife he was having an affair and he wanted a divorce, and that he no longer believed in God. In September of 2012, Tim Lambesis and Megan Murphy began a messy divorce, where it came to light that Tim had become, in the words of Megan, dangerously distracted, that he once fell asleep while their kids were playing in a pool, that he took trips to see a side chick on two separate occasions, and Megan wanted full custody of their children, which Tim really couldn't stomach the fact that he would never be able to see his children again, and it angered him. It made him depressed. Already taking estrogen blockers and other forms of steroids, one could argue that the hostility in his head was not helped by this, but that does not give him an excuse for what he would end up doing. Here is how Tim Lambesis destroyed his life. Brett was a man who worked at the gym Tim had frequented. It is heavily implied that he was the one providing steroids to Tim, though Brett denies this. I do not know if Brett is his real name. I am reading a lot of this from an article on Loudwire, and it only gives the name Brett for this individual. If you want to read the article, link will be in the description. The gym was Pure Fitness in Carlsbad, California. Brett had started going to the gym a month before Tim showed up. Brett and Tim began to become friends of sorts, to the point that Tim ended up texting Brett on April 22nd, 2013. They met up at the gym where Tim brought his girlfriend. As his girlfriend was inside working out, Brett and Tim talked outside the gym. Tim asked Brett if he knew why Tim asked him to come, and Brett jokingly made the remark that he was hoping it was not to kill someone, to which Tim stated coldly that was the reason Brett was there. He wanted Brett to kill his wife. And Brett refused because he was not about to go to prison for Tim Lambesis. But Tim pushed, asking Brett if he knew somebody who could do it. As the meeting ended, Brett became concerned because he felt that Tim was going to hire someone to kill his wife, whether Brett helped or not. So Brett went to an attorney to figure out what to do. And the attorney informed him to get a recording to send to the police, which he did. On the second meeting, Brett mentioned a man who could kill Tim's wife, a man named Red who was a fake person. Brett then sent the recording to the police. The police then found someone to play Red, an undercover cop. And the undercover cop tried to catch Tim on recording saying that he wanted his wife dead. I get at this point Tim Lambesis came out saying that he doesn't believe in God, but I still think there's a place in hell for people like that. And I have just the person who can confirm this. Hey, Madam Hellfire, can you confirm? Yep, level two, the indecisive fucks of the world. I make them listen to Baby Shark over and over and over until their sanity cracks and they beg for God's love. It's actually pretty fun to watch. Great googly moogly, that is evil. So the meeting was set up at Barnes & Noble. Red, really a cop, showed up and the two talked. But Tim did not say during this meeting the words kill or dead. Just suggested the time to do it. When Tim had the kids so that he had an alibi. But as he walked away, Tim turned and said it. He said, just so you know, I want her dead. On May 7th, 2013, the same day as the meeting, Tim Lambesis was arrested on the spot for soliciting murder. On May 9th, 2013, Tim Lambesis pled not guilty to the charge of solicitation of murder. His argument was that his steroid use clouded his judgment and he wasn't thinking rationally, which I am not sure if steroids do that. I know there are arguments that roid rage is a thing, but there are also arguments it isn't. I am not that informed to make a judgment call on that. What I can say though, is that he did not have a good defense. Just because you exercise poor judgment does not mean that you're not guilty. He had thought of it. He had planned it. He had gone to people to help him with it. He was fully willing to have his wife killed. That is premeditation. And he was given a $3 million bond. 
even though he was considered a flight risk. So what was happening with his bandmates with this? Well, they kind of noped out after a while and started a band called Woven War with the lead singer Shane Bay. This might have something to do with what Tim did while he was out on bail. He kind of decided to go onto the internet and make a lengthy post claiming that all the members of As I Lay Dying were atheists and were pretending to be Christians in order to garner more record sales. Which, that is a dick move. Pretty sure that doing this pissed off the rest of his band, with one calling it slanderous and defamatory. By the way, Woven War is at least better on my ears, little to no screaming. But moving on, on May 17th, a new bail hearing put restrictions on him, including GPS monitoring, and he could not contact his kids or his ex-wife. On May 25th, 2014, he changed his plea to guilty. He pretty much had no case, and if he lost, he would have spent a lot of time behind bars. Instead, he was sentenced to six years on May 4th, 2014. He would only serve two years, though, released for good behavior. But in 2016, he did sue two Southern California detention centers for denying him drugs to help with withdrawal symptoms from steroids. It seems that serving time in prison did some good for Tim. He reflected on what he did to get there, and he tried to better himself. In prison, he took classes and became an addiction counselor. He also became a Christian again. He stated that renouncing his faith had made it easier for him to have an affair, and he seemed to genuinely change his outlook on life. By the end of 2016, he had been released from prison and had remarried, this time to a woman named Amanda, though I am not sure if it's the same Amanda he had an affair with or if it was a different person with the same name. I just know he focused on helping others when he got out of prison, doing addiction counseling, but he did reach out to his former band members as well. But those ties were harder to repair. It took a long time for his former band members to forgive him. And who can blame them? He tried to have his wife murdered. He told the world they were atheists without even talking to them about it. And from what I understand, was a false statement anyways. And he ruined what they had. But time does heal wounds. And by 2017, all the members of As I Lay Dying were talking to one another again. And on June 16, 2018, they uploaded a video on YouTube called Discussion, where all the members of the band, well, they discussed things. And in 2019, As I Lay Dying released the album, Shaped by Fire. It seemed everything was back to normal. But while time could heal all wounds, some take time to mend. And it seemed the majority of the band had decided to leave, leaving only Tim Lambesis as the only original member of the lineup. Phil Grosso also stayed with the band, but he began in 2003. Nick Hippa, who was a guitarist for the band, left, saying in a public statement accusing the band of behavior that at times mistreats, disrespects, and hurts other people. Drummer Jordan Mancino stated, There have been a number of ongoing internal issues with As I Lay Dying that need to be worked out. It was my wish to avoid any further touring until the issues were resolved. Since they have not yet been resolved, it is with a heavy heart that I announce I will not be performing at any upcoming tour dates until further notice. After the statement, he left the band. It isn't known if Tim and the others are on speaking terms, or if the relationship deteriorated again. Another relationship that deteriorated was a second marriage. Tim got divorced in 2020, but he has since remarried in 2022 to a woman named Danny. So with this case, I have seen a lot of people ask the question if Tim Lambesis should be forgiven. And there are so many different opinions on that, ranging from yes, he should be, to what he did was unforgivable. So I will give my opinion. It is not as black and white as it seems. What he did was unforgivable. He wanted his ex-wife murdered because of a messy divorce. But I do think he should be given a second chance. He served his time, and from what I've gathered about him, he has done his best to change and to better himself. He has been out since 2016, and as of this video, it is 2023, and he has not broken the law or reoffended. Maybe he did have time to reflect and decide to walk a better path. Hiring a hitman to kill his wife will be a stain on his past, though. He came out of prison remorseful and seeking forgiveness for his crime. If he truly is, who are we to deny him that second chance? <laughs>